Public speaking is simply speaking in front of a public, and many people are literally afraid of it. So in this video, I am going to share what I know about public speaking. But please take note that these are from my experiences as a Toastmaster. Public speaking is considered an art since it requires talent and inspiration to create a lasting impact. It is, in fact, considered one of the highest forms of art. When preparing for a speech, I'd like you to remember these points. Public speaking tip number one, celebrate your stories. You might wonder, how are my stories related to this? Your story or your truth is the body and soul of public speaking. It is everything. It makes your speech personal and tells the audience that you're the right person to speak about a certain topic. Let's say I was given a topic about multicultural exposure. I will go to my story. I will tell my story about how I got exposed to different cultures. I will share how I got culture shocked when I first worked in Saudi Arabia or how I discovered the similarities and differences between Omanis and Saudis or how the Australian culture changed the way I look at life when I was studying in Sydney. I will then talk about how multicultural exposure equips people with diverse perspective enhances their creativity, and reduces their biases towards others. But remember, when given any topic, I will start with my story. I cannot tell the story of another person because I don't own that and I am not familiar with that story. So, I will start with my story. Example. Before I go into my commentary or policies about education, I will start where I am most knowledgeable. It is the fact that I am a teacher and most of my relatives are teachers. So I can say that education is my family. My sister teaches secondary school students while my uncles, aunts, and cousins teach primary students so this is an example of celebrating your story or your truth in any public speaking engagement. Muhammad Katani, 2015 world champion of public speaking, used his personal story effectively in his winning speech, The Power of Words. I have a son who's four, and he had this bad habit of writing on the walls with crayons. And one evening, I walked into his room, and he's going at it, just writing and drawing and so on. And I said, hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Are you stupid? <laughs> Don't you ever do that again. And guess what happened? He did it again. <laughs> I hope that I'm making my point very clearly that your story will always be important in your speeches. Always attach yourself, your story, because that's the most powerful kind of public speaking. Maya Angelou said, I come as one, but I stand as 10,000. So when you stand as a public speaker, you're not alone. You're never alone because you carry with you your stories the stories of your family, your relatives, your ancestors. So take it from the great Maya Angelou. You are never alone. You bring along your stories. So I come as one, I stand as 10,000. Public speaking tip number two, cognitive restructuring. Many people run away from public speaking because of fear. I'm gonna faint. I don't know what to say. I'm going to embarrass myself. 
In public speaking, fear is convincing yourself that something wrong is going to happen. So when you say, I will forget some lines, and you keep on thinking that way, it will happen. Fear is something you have to deal with to be able to do public speaking. You probably heard that public speaking is feared more than death itself. It sounds crazy, but that's what people say. The vast majority of people rank fear of public speaking as number one, 75% according to the National Institutes of Mental Health in the United States. It is because of this fear that you judge your public speaking performance before you even step on the stage. I am going to embarrass myself. People will make fun of me. This is the end of my career. You have to know that this is normal, that you are not alone in experiencing fear. You have to know that we all go through fear. One of the best ways to address this fear is cognitive restructuring. Simply put, cognitive restructuring is changing your mindset. Instead of saying, I will forget my lines, start saying, I will give my best. It may not be easy at first because we all have our shares of embarrassments. Maybe you were embarrassed the first time you spoke in front of an audience. Maybe you were humiliated during a class recitation. Or maybe you made a fool out of yourself when you introduced yourself to a group of people. Just like what I said, we were all embarrassed before and that became our frame of reference. I don't want to do public speaking because I don't want to embarrass myself again. Remember this, you can change that frame of reference. Try to remember a more pleasant experience. Example, you recited a poem in grade school and everybody loved it and you felt proud of yourself. You can change that embarrassing memory with this pleasant memory. So every time you need to speak in public, you will remember that pleasant experience and not the embarrassing one. So when preparing for a speech, always go to a happy, pleasant memory that makes you smile and proud of yourself. Tell yourself, I will give my best and the people will love it. This is cognitive restructuring. Although it doesn't happen overnight, it can happen. Replace the bad memory with a pleasant memory. You will definitely change as a public speaker. Public speaking tip number three, plan your speech. I believe that no great speech happens by accident. You have to plan it. You need to write it and rewrite if necessary. This involves a lot of research. Research the factors that are important to the development of your topic. Then, add the books that you've read and all the speeches that you've heard. Also, include the conversations you've had with people. When they are all related to your topic, put them together. And that's how you prepare for a speech. Then you practice. But don't overdo it. When you over-rehearse, you leave no room for some surprises to happen. When I joined the International Speech Contest in Saudi Arabia, I calculated all my moves, my words, and my timings. I practiced a thousand times because I wanted a flawless performance. But when you're performing live, surprises happen. In one part of my speech, the audience gave me a thunderous applause and I wasn't expecting it. When the audience clap, as a speaker, you have to stop and appreciate their gesture. But I was thinking of my speech timing. I didn't want to be disqualified. So even if people were still clapping, I continued my speech. Here's the clip. 
and as usual, my father cracked the joke. Son, why did the chicken go to KFC? <laughs> I didn't know the answer, so I asked, why? To become the best chicken in the world. <laughs> The lesson here is to have just enough rehearsals and leave room for some magic to happen during your performance. Public speaking tip number four, know your audience and your stage. It is important to know who will be listening to you and where you'll be when you deliver your speech. Both the audience and the stage can create limitations or opportunities. What am I supposed to say before teachers? What will I say to doctors? What should be my message to parents? For example, as a language teacher, I can speak about language learning theories easily to fellow teachers, but how do I explain these things to doctors? It is important to know the people you're going to address so you can adjust your message. Knowing your audience means understanding and respecting their particular characteristics. Now let's talk about stage. I personally check the stage before I deliver my speech. I want to know if there will be enough space for my movements. The stage size can also create limitations or opportunities. If you're using props, make sure you have enough room for them on the stage. Know where you will stand before, during, and after your speech. It is important for me to feel the stage before my performance because I'd like to know how far right I should walk or how far left I should go. Where is the center and how will the audience see me? I usually feel comfortable once I see and feel the stage. So before your speech, know your audience and your stage. There you go. These are all four public speaking tips I have for you today. Please watch out for more. If you like this video, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Stay awesome. Bye.